Tori, and this is the Real Knit Wives of Hunterdon County. Ooh, it's been a while. Happy 2023, everyone. 2023. We've been on hiatus for a few weeks due to holidays and work and personal lives getting in the freaking way. And just work. Yeah. Yeah. No. So it's we're glad to be back. Yes. Hope y'all have been having a great January so far, staying warm and, you know, not going stir crazy with this weird, wacky weather that we're having. Oh, yeah. I mean, what was it? Like, last week we were, like, mid-50s all week, and now we're back down to 20, 25. It was thunderstorming on my way home from work one day, and I was just like, is it January still? I think it's still January. And then... Can't figure it out. And then I'm looking, and I see, like, some of the daffodils are popping up at work as well, and I'm like... It's too early it's for you, sons. Yeah, you need to. I'm like, you're. Come back, come back, come in back like later. March. Yeah, you're too April. early. <laughs> Sometime in there. Yeah, so I, I kind of felt bad for them because I was like, ooh, it's a little too early for you guys. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, hope you will come in. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not at this point. Right. Um, last year, I planted tulip bulbs at the Union House. Right. And they were coming up all of May. Who knows if they've started popping up or not. Mm. I've, I've, it's okay. Those poor things. Yes. And we'll I, figure it out. And I also realized that, um, I'm sorry for everybody <laughs> not realizing that uh, episode three came out on uh, New Year's Day. Um, <laughs> and I did not message, I did not post on social media. And so people were like, it came out already. Oh, I have to like mark it down. And I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry. I sh- I'm going to be better about that. Um, I was real tired. I stayed up until 2 a.m. trying to <laughs> download it. It, it was, was, it was a show when we were both trying to also just enjoy the fact that it was about to be 2023. So it's all fine. Yeah, I'm still getting a hang of, like, the technical side of this, um, so apologies. Well, and I feel like, you know, every once in a while, Adobe will throw us a curveball, because I was editing a video for the uh, gift along that we were doing mm-hmm. together with our local yarn store, and it, for whatever reason, was giving me issues on how to export it. Like, it was a simple video. I didn't right. even edit the video in Adobe Premiere. <laughs> I did it in... Cap cut, and I just put it in there so I could put some um, music behind it and mm-hmm. just call it a day. And it, I had to shut the entire thing down and start all over again because it, it just it was going through like you don't have video, there is nothing to export. Adobe, you can't live with it. You can't live without it either. No, you can't live with it. That's okay, that's the okay. end of it. Okay. Well, I use Adobe all the freaking day. So. I know. I know. PDF editor is like the bomb. dot com. The bomb makes life so much simpler. Oh God, it's so good. Um, but anyway, uh, have you? Been, how have you been? Um, yeah. blah, blah, blah. it's been a long time. You know, um, we lost heat over Christmas. Oh yeah. Um, we had, so we live, obviously, Hunterdon County, a lot of the area over here is run on oil. Um, our neighborhood is primarily run on oil, and those that don't run on oil are run on a uh, heat pump system, so there's no natural gas heating houses over here. And before, um, like, during the November time, we had a heat pump installed um, by a, a wonderful ele- um, electrical company in the area. Mm-hmm. Um, they're great. No problems with them. Um, one of the pieces though, um, actually ended up breaking Oof. and so they had to put an order in, but we weren't aware like how long it was going to take or anything. So right. we had just been using, I guess one of the, one heat pump we have too. Mm-hmm. And long story short, didn't realize the heat pump actually wasn't on. Oof. We used up the rest of our oil Christmas Eve morning, wake up freezing ass house. It's single digits outside feels like negative temperatures due to wind chill. Exactly. My husband and I are out with like three layers on trying to figure out what the hell is going on with our stuff. And it was just a huge life lesson. We were moving off the grid. We were trying to. And we survived. You were an urban girl moving into the yeah. country. Yeah. Um, hey, 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 hey. I, hey, I grew up around farms. I just didn't have to deal with shit like this growing up. Once again, we were very pampered. <laughs> she was very pampered. We lived in Union. We had everything at our fingertips. And now we live in 
bum country so hey we love bum country i for one no complaints <laughs> i for one don't have oil thank god yeah. um so i don't have to go through that awfulness that you no. just spoke about but here's the thing is that everything's fixed now mm -hmm. we're no longer we got oil eventually we got oil monday right uh, the 26th of December, but we're now back on using the heat pumps. Okay. Um, so the next step is to get solar and then we'll be completely off the grid, which is exactly what Dan and I wanted. So awesome. we're super pumped. Are you going to have like a little garden? Like, are you going to grow vegetables yep. like in the springtime? I'm gonna, this is going to be a homestead. I promise. I'm very excited. I'm yeah. su I love growing things. I'm super excited for spring. Um, cause there's like these garden plots right by the pool area. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And they're just, I, I planted bulbs, so I nice. planted some irises. Nice. Um, irises don't typically bloom the uh, after the first year they've been um, planted, so they'll bloom the next year. Okay. Um, I have some of my grandmother's um, peonies. Um, mm -hmm. Not that, you know, I wanted them. I was kind of forced to have them. Um, and, like, I'm just ready to grow stuff. Okay. I think for me and Dan, we, there's some stuff like we want to take out. We've got some really like bushy hedges in the front of our house, oh, which, yeah. mm -hmm. um, we've been told for the solar purposes will need to be removed mm -hmm. in order for them to install all the proper equipment, which was perfectly fine with us because those particular bushes attract spiders. Oof. And if you know anything about living in the woods, that's one, I mean, yes, spiders eat a ton of pests and uh, like smaller bugs. But the different varieties of spiders that we do get out here, some of them aren't so good to have in your house. See episode one for our rant on yeah. all the critters that we have to deal with. <laughs> um, speaking of critters that I have to deal with, this winter, a lot of ladybugs have been like coming, coming into in your house. Yeah. And okay. okay. Also back to the first episode, calling back, um, I said that whatever enters my territory, my domain gets killed. Yeah. Now, I have spared the ladybugs only because their mm -hmm. poor decision making uh, also kills them. So they, yeah, either they die outside or they die in my house. Yeah, um, I mean it. I let them die to their own hubris. Um, yeah. But it's it's sad to like because they don't bother me. Um, they don't bother my husband. They just kind of sit by the windows and crawl around until they die and. It's sad. I don't want them to do that, you yeah. know? But also, it's, like, blistering cold outside, so, like, I understand why they They're came inside. inside. Yeah. yeah. Like, I understand, but you're gonna... It, this is no sanctuary for you. You're gonna die here anyway. Yeah. So, I, I... No. I'm torn about that. No. But, yeah, so, I think for us, like, we need to get those hedges removed, but the most... Planting. I mean, I could see myself planting tulips again. I loved planting tulips, mm, and when they bloom, tulips. I prefer everything on a when it comes to the tulips on a moodier scale. So they have almost black, very dark violet tulips, and edgy. ones that have I like my tulips edgy, edgy. Um, so I think I'll plant some more of those at some point. Mm -hmm. But I think my real priority after getting the hedges removed is building up um, an herb garden and like. Um, doing some root vegetables and stuff like that. Nice. Because we eat a ton of potatoes in this house. <laughs> um, and, you know, t potatoes aren't bad, like, price-wise. But, you know, I'd also like to do, like, get some onions and carrots. Because um, those are things that we eat a ton mm -hmm. of. Um, we also talked about getting some chickens at some point. Oh, yeah. I was about to say the price of eggs right now are Holy sky fuck. high. Everywhere. The eggs in Arizona are worse than they are here, if you can believe it. My mom was complaining to me on the on the phone the other day. She's like, I think I paid $10 for a carton of 18 eggs. I'm like, no. Well, not only is it greed, inflation, but it's also due to the avian flu, right? Um, see, I don't really know if it's what is exactly the cause, but yeah, that would make sense. Also, just the fact that, you know, I feel like farms maybe aren't getting the money that they, they used to be, so they're not able to produce the demand. You have chickens that are living in, you know, poor conditions, so 
There's like a lot laying. of factors. There's a lot of factors as to why eggs are expensive, which is why you should raise your own or go to like a farm stand and get your eggs. I was actually thinking about that because um, we have the space for chickens yeah. and we can do that. And I was like telling somebody that I have a lot of foxes running around my neighborhood and coyotes. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't want my chickens to suffer a horrible death. Uh, and and hawks and turkey yeah. vultures yeah. and we have bald eagles in our backyard. Yeah. So. so um I was talking to somebody and they were like, Oh yeah, like I have like some kind of like caged over coop, like yeah. they are, you know, free range but also like they're protected and yeah. you know, that's a little bit like relieving. Yeah. Um, because I also want ducks too, because they're heckin' cute. Um yeah. No, I'm definitely on the whole, I want my own poultry. Also, because I think having a hen named Cordelia and just yelling Cordelia Ramiosa running around the yard would be, like, super freaking cute. I like how you wanted to name a chicken that and you're not saving it for your child. Oh, no, I would never name my child Cordelia. That's awful. Why? I would, no. I love that name. All right, I, I'm in a Portuguese family, so, like, my names kind of have to follow the... Portuguese tradition. She completely, completely <laughs> abandoned her actual heritage, which is Scottish, or whatever else her family comes from, completely abandoned it for Portuguese. Well, and I'm Portuguese, and, like, I'm not doing that. Well, yeah, but my, my in-laws actually are from Portugal. Like, born, raised Portugal. She's not. It's fine. I know I'm not Portuguese, but my husband's Portuguese. So you can also incorporate your own That's traditions. Fine. But Cordelia is not Scottish, so you could. How about be a modern American and name whatever you want your child? That sounds like awfulness. Name that's, it that's Cordelia. How, that's how we end up with children named uh, Corona and Social Distance. Okay, and... Corona is actually Latin for for crown. <laughs> Are we actually arguing about this right now? <laughs> yes, I'm going to get into this. So, uh, the reason why the coronavirus was named the coronavirus was because it had a crown of protein spikes around it. Oh my god. So, there is the corona borealis, there is, which is a constellation, there's the corona of the sun, which is a, a layer, kind of like the photosphere of the sun, which is... Um, kind of like gassiness and like where the photons come out. Um, so Corona has been around a lot longer than the coronavirus. So if anyone I mean, wants to name their, their beauty or, and also Corona beer, um, but don't name your child after a beer. Uh, oh heavens. but I mean, it's a beautiful name. It's Latin for crown. Don't see anything wrong with it. I named my computer Corona. Oh God. <laughs> and this was before coronavirus as well. So Listen, I, I'm i just, I'm going to save the name Cordelia for one of my chickens. I also plan on naming one Abigail. And I'm sure there's great Scottish names out there that she'll name her children. Yes. All right, let's get to our whip corner. <laughs> what are you working on right now? No, we got to do our little whip corner. <sighs> What are you working on, Madison? I don't... I asked you first. No. Okay. I'm working Go on... first. I'm working on the Cargill by <laughs> Craya B. Knits. You can see. Yeah. Um, this was in timeout for a while because um, it's not very Victoria friendly. Um, but because Madison kind of like looked at me with like puppy dog eyes and was just like, we're doing this together. Okay. All right. First of all, yes, but also... You had a goal of, beginning of the year, finishing up your whips. This was on the needles. And you worked on other things. And I was going to take the yarn and no. use it for something else. Because no. this yarn is, like, fantastic. Oh, my goodness. And like, it'll be a great sweater. Look at this. It's, like, it's like it has, like, it's, like, dove white with some, like, pinks, some purples in there. I don't know if it's going to show on the camera that well. Oh, but it's mm. it, it's squishy and it's just it looks like a cloud. It like I am so excited. I love this yarn so much. I'm like so excited to like finish it so I can wear it. 
Um, not, not too stoked about uh, the pattern, but you know, not every pattern is for everybody. Um, I love the pattern. Right. Yeah. I'm sad I can't work on it right now because I'm all sweatered out with gift nets, but you're crazy for gifting sweaters to begin with. There. Okay. We'll get into this. But yes, I am gifting sweaters. I'm. I would not do it for any just any birthday. Right. These are big birthdays. These are milestone birthdays, and we did finish one of three. Right. So, which is which is great. So, yeah. um, what was I gonna say? I don't know. Oh, you like what, the yarn? Yes, I love the okay. yarn. Um, this this is um, breezy beach fibers. Okay. Um, I got this when we were at Mother Knitter. Oh, so I kind of, uh, okay. so we took a road trip. Um, when was this? Like in the beginning of the year? It was Ju- no July of, it was right before, um, 4th of July. Oh, okay. So it was right before the 4th of July and Madison needed more fiber from one of the stores down South on the, um, in the, the Jersey shore area. Yeah. Um, so we took our friend Tatiana and we went on this road trip all the way down to Red Bank. Mm-hmm. Where? And, uh, Avon by the Sea. And Avon by the Sea. Yeah. So, um, this was a great trip. We, we had a ton of fun. We went to Mother Knitter, which is one of the stores down there where I bought this fiber. So I'm kind of like, because we're working on this pattern together and, you know, I bought this fiber with Madison it's kind of like connecting her in that way. Yeah. Um, we also had amazing donuts. Oh my God. The donuts were amazing. They were so good. My mouth's still watering. The PB and J donut is probably my favorite. So this place is called once bitten. Yeah. And it's a donut shop, like custom made donuts, freshly made with ice. There's also ice cream there. Yeah. You can buy like ice cream and a donut and then you can die from diabetes. Yeah. And they have a cute ass swing. Yes. <laughs> I was obsessed with the green wall and the swing. Yes. We'll insert a picture <laughs> because I'm, I'm, I'm all for the Instagram moments and that was definitely an Instagram moment, but that aside, the donuts were good. Oh, they were amazing. Like I need to go down there just for mother knitter and the donuts. again. <laughs> I would just go for the donuts. I mean, I like mother knitter, but I would just, like, if I go to mother knitter, I'm stopping at the donut shop. 100%. If, yeah. If I'm going to the donut shop. I might not be stopping at Mother Knitter. <laughs> I mean, it's just, I mean, we live far away now. We so do. I it guess makes sense. making the trip all at once. I actually kind of want to go back down there mm. in the winter when it's not super busy. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm thinking about going sometime next month if the weather is good. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, so what are you working on? All right. So I'm working on an oldie but a goodie. This is the Gather Shawl by Andrea Mowry. And this was a project, sorry, girlfriend doesn't want to work with me today. Um, This was a project that we started during our knit along, our summer knit along with Beyond Yarn. Um, It's out of less traveled yarns in Brick House. Brick House. (laughs) And the color Sedona. It's obviously uh, Arizona Dyer because Sedona is uh, one of the many beautiful places that you can go visit. And obviously this looks like Red Rock. My Sedona. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Sorry. I can't. I'm all for it. But yeah, so I, I, I never finished this because I took on the bur- uh, the burden, the pleasure of doing two, two gather shawls, but I finished the store sample and then I got married and then I went on vacation and then I moved and I actually misplaced this for a hot minute. It oh. was in a project bag, but the project bag wasn't with the rest of my whip projects i see so it was in with a whole bunch of boxes and as i was going through a box i'm like oh i recognize that project bag what's in there so i i picked it up last week because i was under the impression Mm -hmm. when we're filming i like to be able to look at the camera and not look at my knit and i need it to be either stockinette or um garter stitch i don't want to mess anything up because talking is hard when talking you're knitting. Talking is really hard. Right. Um, but yeah, so that's what I'm working on. And what are you wearing, by the way? Oh, so we're getting to finished objects now. Yay. Um So I completed a 
bunch of finished objects um, recently, which I'm pretty proud of only because I'm really trying to get things off my needles and just finishing them. So today I am wearing, I think you could see this. Yep. That's Andrea, great. Andrea Mowry's uh, Flicker and Flame hat. Lovely. Um, I got a, a kit from uh, a local yarn store called Wool and Grace during the NJ Wool Walk. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? I need another hat in my life. I also have this kit that's been sitting around. I'm going to start doing this project. Um, the yarn is great. Um, let me pull out the I yarn. I love the blue. Oh. I, I, I really want to know what that is. Is it multiple colors or is it just one? It's multiple colors. Hold on. Cool. So the Ooh. so the uh, white is uh, North Light fibers. Okay. So this is an um, snowflake. Okay. It is forty percent cashmere and sixty percent super fine merino. Okay, so a little luxury on the head. Yes, that's. I I say cashmere should be certified for hats and that sort of. Stuff, small cashmere is, is certified for everything. You always make stuff with cashmere if you can afford it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who else? Ooh. Um, this is a German brand called Sharp Sharpel? Sheppel? Sheppel? I, I don't I don't ever remember what it is. But I love um, their stuff. Yes, and their color is Bestelnummer because it's German. We're not German. <laughs> Please at me if I can pronounce it wrong. I'm sorry. We'll, we'll link everything in the show notes. Yes. Um, everything will be written out nicely so you can... And not in German. No. Um, but yes, these are super comfy. Add a little pom-pom on top nice. for finishing. Um, and yeah, it was a super easy pattern. Highly recommend it. Um, mm -hmm. Probably we'll make another one of these because it was super easy to get through. Probably took a day about. Nice. Very cool. Um, I'm not going to tell you what I'm wearing just yet because it's a part of our main topic tonight. Um, but it is um, a pattern by our dear friend Barb, um, who is one of our fellow community members at Beyond mm -hmm. Yarn. Um, she designed this last spring. Um, and if you can't tell, it's a scrappy project. But before we get there, I'll share... Um, do you want to continue going through FOs? Yeah, okay. um, share yours. Okay, so I've got a couple... Um, I'll say the first one, this was, um, the f last thing I finished in 2022. I had yet, I have yet to post about it mm -hmm. because I've just, life's been hectic and the idea of editing photos, taking photos, editing photos, doing a post, like it just, I'm not, I'm not there. She's not there I'm yet. I'm not there yet, guys. I'm sorry. I'm, 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 we're not there me. yet. <laughs> it's hitting me. Um, but if you can tell, it's a very slouchy beanie. It's called the Pea Vine by mm -hmm. um, Gudrun Johnston, or the Shetland Trader. Um, and it's made all out of Jameson's, uh, Jameson and Smith's two-ply jumper weight. Ooh. And um, these lovely colors. This is yarn that I picked up while I was in Scotland. So the main color is this navy, and we have, mm -hmm. like, a natural cream color, um aqua turquoise and then a like a fuchsia like bubblegum color and it's a lovely um feral pattern mm -hmm. which i i bought the yarn to make a hat and i have other than the navy i have pl uh, a good chunk of yarn still so if right. i wanted to get more colors i could go and make mitts i might mm -hmm. get more navy like just a skein of the navy navy's a good base um and do mitts with a similar motif. Right. Um, but yeah, so this was my last um, finished object of 2022. Oh, crap. And then this was my first finished object of 2023. Woo! So these are the Oma Lenny mitts. And I found out about this pattern from the Wool Needles Hands podcast, who's also mm -hmm. um, on a YouTube po uh, knitting podcast. She's also the dyer behind Fiber for the People. Um, she's really sweet. She's out of Nevada, but mm. she, this was a free pattern on Ravelry that she was promoting as like a cast on for either Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve. And I'm like, you know what? I like to try and finish a small project within like the first couple of days of the new year. Cause right. it just jump starts the creativity and I needed chunky mitts because Her Christmas other... was f 
I'm cold. And her other mitts are not finished yet. They're not, but that that's we're getting there. That's I printed out color charts for the octopus mitts. We talked about them in a previous episode. They will be getting done soon. Um, okay, I'm gonna show one of mine. Go ahead. So this project I've been working on for a good chunk of last year. Oh, this is Mom Corner. Yeah, so this is my mother's um, specifically coral blanket that she requested for her room um, in her new house. Um, and the deal was that I would make her this blanket in exchange for, um, I would come and visit her every Tuesday, uh, for meals. So she was supposed to make, she's supposed to make me meals and I'd make her this blanket. The deal's not going to end. I'm still going to show up. Um, <laughs> so really excited about this. This was made with Pima cotton, uh, Pima cotton and Merino wool. Okay. So it's, a uh, uh, Pima Reno. By uh, Plymouth uh, Yarns. Mm -hmm. So we got cotton and we got this like natural like whitish uh, looking and it creates this nice motif. Um, I think it looks like a cake when it looks like this. Sean uh, sees pineapples. So if I you see like a little. seashells. Yes. Yeah, um, but I got this stitch from a stitch book and then I made the border a nice like simple single crochet border. Um, oh. I didn't cut or I didn't tuck in the ends for this border because I don't know if my mom wants um, this border or if she wants like a different border, I don't know. So she so wanted to leave it unfinished. So yeah. if she likes it great, you just have to tuck in the ends. Yes. And then if she doesn't, you can clearly just easily rip it out. Right, exactly. So mm. I'm really excited about it because it's really warm and if she doesn't like it, I'm taking it back. <laughs> it looks really good. And I remember when you started that, it has been a long process because Blankets are a long project. It was with a size three needle. Okay, she's a little bit crazy because she yeah. didn't want any holes in it. She and wanted a nice tight knit blanket. She wanted a nice tight knit blanket. And I I knitted it with size three needles. So doing anything with size three, like you should be doing a small project with that. Um, you mm -hmm. know, lace. Um, not a blanket. So or a fair owl hat. Yeah. So love you, mom. <laughs> Never doing it again, mom. <laughs> Only for you, Mom. Let, let, let's get on the topic of um, projects that were a labor of love right. like that. Okay, so my mom had a milestone birthday uh, at the beginning of January. And before you come at me, she got the rest of her birthday gifts on her birthday. And she was told ahead of time that her main birthday gift was going to be belated because of the amount of milestone birthdays I've had since December till now. Right. Two 30th birthdays and a 60th birthday. I'm not going to tell you who's who, but... You know who you are. You know who you are. Um, but anyway, so Mama Mama Dearest's uh, project has she been She turned finished. 30. No, I'm kidding. Oh, God. <laughs> that would be weird. <laughs> anyway, back on topic. This is the Boardwalk Stroll by Jennifer Shields Toland. Ooh. Um, it's a poncho with a cowl neck, um, and the cowl has this lovely, you know, m mesh lace, Ooh. and the entire body is knit through the back loop ribbing, so obviously that takes a little bit longer than a regular rib. A labor of love, one it's might say. It's a labor of love. There's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears in this bitch. A lot of blood. Not too much because it's not stained. So, um, it's made out of Haiku Sueño and the color Shifting Sands. And then we copied the border. It's just a little border. Mm -hmm. And she's going to get the rest of the skein because I barely did anything with it. But it's a color that she definitely would use. It's Sweet Sparrow Yarns, uh, their Swift base, which mm -hmm. is just their Merino base, and the color Terracotta. Nice. So, Mom, I, I know you love your bright oranges and stuff but i wanted to give you something a nice neutral yeah poncho that you could wear with a ton of stuff it'll keep you nice and warm and this thing is stretchy so you can definitely like really hug it to your body um and it'll it'll be nice for a long time so sueño holds up yeah Real good proven she's used it several times <laughs> so i knew when i chose this that it was right. gonna be you know, it a looks, workhorse. It looks great. It's so comfy. I just need it to finish drying so I can nail it. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, do you have any other finished objects? I do. Okay. So I've been into spinning a lot lately. Um, 
And so I brought a few of the skeins that I finished on some of my wheels. So um, this is... Ooh. So the fiber is Crown Jewels nice. uh, by uh, Piano Spun Fibers. Very cool. Um, and I like the colors. Yes, it's it's beautiful. Can you smell that? Yeah. Um, so this is uh, merino and silk. Mm -hmm. And this is once again from Jess. I got to shout her out every single time. <laughs> and uh, part of this was spun on my Canadian production wheel. Mm -hmm. And then um, I applied it on the Canadian uh, production wheel again. So it's it's a really tight, um, really tight yarn. Yeah. Um, so. It looks like it's going to make a really, really nice fabric, though. Yeah. Like, I like, I like the, um, how it plied together. Yeah. Wish you could focus. Please focus. There we go. Ta-da. Ta-da. Um, which I also washed it with our tufted woolens. Uh, oh, wash. Yeah, some tough woolens. So. Yeah, so it's a, it's a really tight, because I learned that you cannot uh, ply with the Canadian production wheel. We, I, I like to uh, affectionately call Big Bertha. Oh, um, she's only made for singles uh because doing a tight ply on her is just it's too tight you're gonna get a too tight of a yarn yeah um so my next one is this is ink ink oh uh, spilled ink by uh Frab fragilous fibers yeah okay Wonder wonderland yarns and fragilous yeah fibers. Okay. wonderland yarns and fragilous fibers um so this I kind of was experimenting with a thicker yarn, um, kind of doing a gimp yarn where there's a, uh, smaller, uh, yarn wrapped around a bigger yarn. Yeah. Um, that would make a nice hat. yeah, it's feel it. It's like super squishy, Ooh. super squishy. I don't know if that's going home with you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have more to make. So like, that's fine. Um, <laughs> yes. And so this is a gift for friends. Nice. So. Oh, is that the stuff you made for? Aaron? Yeah. Yes. Well, I didn't know. I just didn't know she was watching. I didn't know how soon she was. No, she, no. She okay. knows this is. Uh, she requested it. Nice. Um, so this is probably my most balanced yarn that I've ever made. Um, cool. So some of it was spun on Big Bertha, and then I plied it off of her with um, my travel, my Ashford Traveler. Yeah. Uh, come on. Uh, sorry, guys, in advance. We're trying over here. It's, it's focusing. It's just really dark. Yeah. Um, really balanced. Uh, really just like squishy and soft. It's uh, wool and silk. So she's That's definitely nice. going to enjoy this. Um, yeah. That'll work out really nice crochet. Oh, yeah. I'm very excited for her. Like, it's so balanced. I'm like super proud of this. Um, because like, I, I just am, I'm still learning with spinning. I'm still learning and I'm still really diving deep into the hobby um i bought myself a drum carter <laughs> holy <laughs> um and i also have the fleece and fiber source book so i am learning about all the different sheep and fleeces and let me say i want to buy all the sheep i want all of them they're so cute i mean listen my mom was asking me the other night she's like so are you and dan getting a sheep and i said well if we get one sheep we have to get multiple sheep right you can't just have one sheep you can't just have one no sheep. The, the, every all these animals are herd animals you can't just get one and call it good like i i, I told her i might want a goat and she's like oh well why don't you get a sheep i'm like well either way i'm gonna have to get multiple of them right we can't just have one also it's not a dog also because i can't own those like large animals on my property because I don't have three acres. Mm. Um, I saw a property that was three acres for thirty thousand dollars, and hey. I was like, "Hey, Sean, do you want to own a farm?" <laughs> he obviously he's not thrilled about that. Um, oh. So no, our, our 
My plans of a farm, or a hobby farm, have been dashed so far, but I'm getting there because I brought a drum carter and I'm learning about dude, the fleeces. Dude, we, the four of us are just going to have to sit down and have a conversation at some point. Jess, is, Jess is, like, super excited about I this. Think, I think the women folk need to have a discussion and the boys will just have to get on board. Oh, my God. When when we go to Rhinebeck, like... Yeah. Me and Jess are going to elbow our ways to the... Or elbow I'm, our way to the fibers. Have so much fun. I'm going to I'm gonna be somewhere else. I know. You're going to be with the animals. I'm going to be with the animals, <laughs> visiting with Alfredo, my, my bestie that I that I named, and um, all the other alpacas and sheep and goats and llamas. They're going to still be there once I'm done getting I'm my sure, fleece. I'm so. sure, but I don't need to be in the elbow room. I don't want fleece right now. <laughs> I'm that, I don't have room for that in my life. Steen and I will go look at the animals. Yes, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, yeah. So I'm really into spinning that. Um, those were my last finished objects. Okay, I got one. Well, it's I guess it's technically still a whip because it doesn't have pom-pom on it yet. But I just finished this this afternoon. Um, this was a project that uh, I had been brainchilding during our Zoom nights. I had some lovely... Surrey from Siobhan Crafts, uh, which is over in the UK, and it's just lovely purple. Thank God the lighting is finally like we're just, able to can see you the true see colors. This? When I was showing it on Zoom the last several nights, it was just showing up as purple, but now you can see the rest, the aqua. Oh, that is like gorgeous! I, I love this. But obviously, I'm not just gonna make a hat out of this. Like that's just it's not right. I'd have to hold this like double, triple, quadruple. And that's not what I wanted to do. So right. I pick up a skein from the trunk show that Cake had at Beyond Yarn. And this is uh, Cake Wool in their Pepper Base, which is just their Merino, um, in the color Twinkle. And it's this cornflower blue. And I'm like, it's the perfect base where you can still see some of the blue pop through. Yes. But oh, it just God. lets the Surrey shine. It does. Um, wow. And so this is the Parkview, um, either hat or beanie by Trish, uh, well, Tri Parkview beanie by Tracy Miller. Please excuse Madison while she breaks. <laughs> Swear to God. But, um, the, the pattern calls for a slouchier hat, but my pea vine is definitely a slouchier hat, so I didn't want a slouchy beanie. I wanted something that was going to fit more tight, but I definitely want a pom-pom on top. Oh, yeah. And I just need a button to do my pom-poms because I have a selection. I just haven't picked which one I want yet. So you're going to have to help me later. That's what I thought. Ooh, I like that. Right? Okay. I like that I'm one. I'm thinking like this gray one. It's like a nice, it's got some, you know, silvery tones to it, which are going to like. It's a nice neutral. It's a yeah. Contra it's contrasting too because the pink, I was like, there's too much color going on. The white's too bold. Yeah. This isn't the right gray. No. But I also had this one. Mm. Yeah, so, like, the difference is very minimal, but this one's lighter. This one's obviously darker. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm leaning towards the, the lighter one. Yeah, I think it's going to look cute. But I have plenty of this left over, so once I finish octopus mitts, I will be making a pair of mitts to match. Because my goal this year is to try and use up as much yarn from the skeins that I'm using as possible. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want to have a whole... I have bins of scraps, which we're getting into that. That's part of our main topic tonight. Mm -hmm. I don't need any more scrap yarn. I got plenty to use for a multitude of projects. I want to, you know, use up what I'm taking out of stash. Right. As much as possible. Um, speaking of scraps... Okay. Uh, Madison, what do you do with all your scraps? If I if I have so many scraps, when I, what am I supposed to do with it? Um, so that's a good question. You could throw them in a bin and forget that they exist. That's what I do. Um, <laughs> you could try and you know, I don't know, just do a, a sample scarf or something. You literally just do stripes. Or. You can do some of these awesome patterns that we found for scraps. And advent calendars. Yeah. I'm sure a ton of you have gotten advent calendars over, like, the holiday season. 
Um, I didn't this year, but I did get two last year, so, like, I was fine not getting any this year. Right. Um, but I'm sure you also have, if you've done any shawls or projects using fingering weight or any weight yarn, you have a decent amount of leftover. You know, projects that use multiple colors, you might only use, like, 20, 30, 40, maybe up to 50 grams. Or you lost yarn chicken and... Had to go buy another skin. You had to go buy so you another... you have 80 grams left or 90 grams left. So you have almost the full thing. <laughs> yeah. Because you needed that tiny bit to finish off a project. Yeah. Absolutely. So tonight's main topic is scraps. Being scrappy with your scraps. Oh, for the love of leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good title, right? Oh, for the love of leftovers. Uh, I'm going to use both of them. Being scrappy with scraps. Oh, for the love of leftovers. I love it. Okay. Um both good titles. Yes. All right. So I have some scraps here, literally okay. from the projects that I've completed. So I have scrap from the hat. Nice. And see, I have, see, leftover from the hat uh, kit that I got. You're not going to believe what I just did. I just pulled all my live stitches off my needle. We're back. Woo. Masson sat her ass down on her whip and dropped all her stitches. So, we're playing pickup. Where were we, Tori? So, I have my scraps from my hat that I'm wearing. Nice. So, I have scraps here. Okay. Um, I have scrap from my grandmother's shawl. Okay. Um, and I have scrap from my mom's blanket. So, here's nice. some scrap left. So, all of these are different weights. All of them, uh, I have no idea how much is left. So... What do you suggest is good for that? Okay, so first, I would suggest getting a small scale, which you can find cheaply on Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, if you have an idea of, like, if you remember what the yarn is, mm -hmm. and you know what weight it is, just by weighing out the scraps, you'll be able to kind of approximate how much yardage you have left. Okay. Because, you know... Certain weights are so many yards. So 100 grams of fingering weight is typically at least 400 yards. It could be more than that. Mm -hmm. um, or like, it's like 380 meters or something. Right. Like 400 yards. DK's fluctuates between like 250 to 300. Mm -hmm. um, and it goes lower and lower and lower. Like worse it's 220. Um, th that aside, having a small weighted scale... And weighing out your leftovers, if you already know what base weight it is, DK, worsted, chunky, whatever, mm -hmm. you'll be able to approximate how much you have left and what kind of project you can do. Mm, okay. So I'd say for, like, a larger amount of scraps, like, for this situation with my the leftovers from my hat, I definitely have enough for pyramids. Mm -hmm. It's another small project. I will pr pretty much finish up. I'll probably finish up the story. I might have still a little bit left of the merino left. Okay. But then that can get thrown into a project that asks for a ton of colors. Mm hmm And just from there, you know, I only need a small amount. So it'll right. get used up the last little bits. So, like, how scrappy is too scrappy? Because, like, I have scraps that are, like, maybe, like, a couple yards. And then I have scraps that are, like, literally almost the entire skein. So, I'd say scrappy is, like, we'll, we'll get into this. Okay. I'll, I'll show you a, a live example. So, I said that this was by our friend Barbara. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take it off because it's easier to show. This pattern is called the um, Ode to Grace and Frankie. It was inspired by the show, the sitcom Grace and Frankie, which is published on Netflix. Um... And so this project, she's designed it to be scrappy as well as only use two colors. Mm. The original design was scrappy. She had a ton of leftovers from different projects over the years. And what she wrote when we were, because te I test knit it for mm -hmm. her, she said, you know, you're using between 10 to 20 grams of colors. Okay. There were some colors that I maybe used five grams, but it really depends on the project. I'd say, you know, you can get away with less grams of yarn in socks. Bigger projects like a cowl or a scarf, 
are better off when you have more like 20 grams per color or even like 10 grams per color. Yeah, there's like there's a cowl that I um a lot of these patterns that we're gonna talk about tonight. Um, I want to do because uh, I have scraps, but also uh the juniper cowl that I mentioned in last episode mm-hmm. um specifically mentions using mini skeins to okay. um do the actual like, cowl itself. Yeah. Um, Which mini skeins are typically around twenty grams each. Right. So that's basically scraps. You can use scraps to make the juniper cowl. Um. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, what pattern uh, would you like to talk about first? Okay. So the first pattern I've got is actually not a fingering weight pattern. It's called the Scrappy Ski Hat, and we'll Ooh. insert a picture. It's by Justina Lorkowska, which she has a ton of cool designs. I've got a couple of hers on my queue. Mm-hmm. But this one is an Aran weight. The original yarn was Drops Nepal, which is, we don't get drops really over here. You can buy it online, but I haven't seen it in any stores. It's yeah. really based in the UK and in Europe. Um, but it's, I think, comparable to some of, like, the Plymouth yarns and the Barocos and that sort mm. of stuff. Um, but it's a interesting pattern because it's still color work. It's got this kind of lovely kind of, like, chevron going on. Ooh. Like, mini chevron. Mini so it's not, like, super thick, um, like chunky it it looks really really nice and it Mm -hmm. comes she actually um has instructions for a pom-pom on top that's cute made out made out of some of the scrap yarn so it's you know several colors um it looks like the gauge is 18 stitches over four inches you use like between 160 to 200 yards of air and weight in several colors. And you can add as many colors as you want. So if you've got leftovers from several different hats, cowls, whatever, in air and or worsted weight, you could essentially use up, like, all your little mini balls mm-hmm. that are left over from, mini balls. <laughs> from mm-hmm. your hats and stuff. So, like, what would you have? This is worsted weight, right? Um... I don't think so. I think this is... It looks like it's worsted. It's not worsted? I could be wrong. I'm, it's okay if I'm wrong. But, like, this would be a fun color in it because it's col- it's it looks like it's color shifting a bit. It is color shifting. Um, So, I would say this is more like a sport weight. Okay. So, But that kind of aspect. In that case, like, a dream state would probably be fine if you had leftovers from, like, um... Why am I blanking on the name of the yarn? It's Dream State by, um... Please excuse Madison. She's breaking tonight. I didn't bring my brain tonight, apparently. <laughs> the yarn I'm thinking of will be in the comment, in the in the description below. I can't. Question. Do you ever bring your brain? I do. I, I promise I do. We've been... I've been off since Friday, so... The logic isn't all there. Anyway, uh, it looks like it's going to be, it would be a fun pattern. And I definitely have Aaron leftovers Mm -hmm. that I could use up. That's the one thing for me. I have tons of fairy leftovers that I could obviously throw into any, any small project or a scarf or whatever. Right. But I never know what to do with like the like last bits of Aaron weight yarn I have left over. Cause it's not normally a lot. I right. might have enough to do a row or two. And it's not something that you commonly buy, so no. it's not like you're going to have I buy more Aaron weight for specific things. I bought bulky yarn to make bulky mitts because it's freezing. Right. And wearing figuring weight mitts right now makes no sense at all. Right. Um, but yeah, so that's the first pattern. It's, again, the Scrappy Ski Hat by Justina Lorkowska. And it looks like a ton of fun. Um, how about you? So, I have, um, some crochet patterns for crochet friends. Ooh, yay! Um, so, uh, like I said, the Juniper Cowl is crochet. Okay. Um, but I also have the Checkerboard Advent Cowl. Okay. Now, this is crochet. It's a cowl, um, multiple colors. It's by Potter and Bloom. Okay. Um, they use about 425. 20 yards so 420 please <laughs> it um, <laughs> um so it's multicolor. um it's you're supposed to use your advent stuff um I, I i've never gotten an advent calendar with yarn it sounds like a lot of fun um and i feel like this would be a great project to do after you receive all 24 days of your new yarn 
Um, and really, you'll get to experience all the yarn, too. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it looks like a fantastic pattern. Um, you said it was fingering weight? Um, or is it sport? I think it's, yeah, it's fingering weight. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So, if you have fingering weight leftovers, um, this is a great project to do. And it looks like it's got, a, like, a fun pattern to it, too. So, it's not just plain old stripes. It's got some sort of... Right. It's not boring. Yeah. Um, so one of, this was actually an advent plant, a planned advent pattern. It's called the Advent Wrap by B. Devensteiner. This is a knit pattern. And I actually, I did cast this on with advent yarn from last year. Mm, okay. I have ripped it out just because I didn't like the order of colors that I put together. Oh. So it wasn't for a lack of loving the pattern. I think it's a great, it's a lace pattern. Mm -hmm. uses fingering weight, meant to be used for your mini skeins from Advents or skein sets that you got maybe as gifts. Um, mm -hmm. But I just didn't like how my colors were pairing out. You, The one thing with this pattern is it's also recommended if you don't, it's a you use up 24 minis, but they also recommend having a neutral full skein. Right. Um, which some of these projects might, if it's a scarf or a shawl or a sweater, having a main color and then your mini skeins are... That. Yeah, you kind of want to tie it all in because it's a little too distracting if you have too many colors going on. You want to make sure that you can see the full effect of all of those scraps that you do yeah. and make sure that it comes out beautiful. Yeah. So I do have um, a skein of Malabrigo Machita. I, it was in the color natural, so it's the creamy white. It mm -hmm. was going to look really nice with this. I just have to replan my colors. So um, I think I had too many light colors together, and I wanted more of, you know, I wanted light, dark, light, dark. And mm -hmm. I just, I was kind of just too excited to start on the project rather than taking my time and planning it out. Right. So I'm um, once, you know, I'm going to get a couple things off the needles and then cast that on. I think again and redo that. We'll see if she gets anything off the needles. Hey, we're working on things. You know, <laughs> I got four things off the needles since the last podcast. We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, we'll see. next project. <laughs> next project, ma'am. We'll see. Um, so this is the Riptide Wrap Advent Edition. Uh, this is by Marita Muller. Okay. And this is Crochet. Okay. Um, so this uses about um, 1,072 to 1,094 yards. So mm -hmm. I'm seeing a lot of colors here and then a uh, like a base color. Um, so like we were saying before, having something neutral to tie it all in. Um, mm -hmm. And this is also fingering weight. So if you're, you have a ton of fingering weight, like I do, because I specifically make everything in fingering weight, um, yeah. this is something for you. Um, and it's like a, what's it, asymmetrical yeah, shawl. Definitely. So it's and definitely. It, it looks like it's got almost like a gradient to it, but you don't have to do it as a gradient. No. You can definitely decide to do all different colors. It doesn't right. have to be ombre or anything like that. Right. But, cool. Yeah, okay. so you can do big projects like shawls. It's possible. Um, yeah. But you will need a little more yardage, so you're going to want full skeins of um, your minis. Or right. even if you've got one, it's a good project for when you have, like, half a skein left of fingering weight yarn. Right. Um, yeah, and then having that new neutral base color like this, like, I have this left over. Yeah. So definitely something to consider when you're uh, okay. diving into one of these projects. Okay. I've got another hat. This is called the Advent Tam. It's by, just lost his name, Jose Visar. Um, it's a fingering weight hat. Mm -hmm. It's a ferrile design, which is super cool. Um, I Obviously, I'm really obsessed with ferrile knitting. I want to do more styles like my pea vine, so mm -hmm. this might definitely be another thing I'd like to cast on. Um, you're going to use between, probably not full... So he's listed out about 500 yards, but you're not going to use that much from the for the hat. It's right. it's a tam. It's not going to take that much yarn, but you probably have 20 grams of this, 20 grams of that, 20 grams of this, 20 grams of that. Right. It all adds up together. Yeah. It's not just going to be one single skein of a thousand yards. Yeah. So you would have, you know, 100 yards maybe of this color, 100 yards of this color, and 
again, it's sterile, so you're going to have a healthy mix and a nice texture. You'll want to pick something a little more rustic mm -hmm. for this type of project because you're going to want the ferrule to shine. Mm -hmm. If you pick your um, leftovers that are more, like, silky or, like, super wash, it's not going to treat the ferrule knitting as well. Like, right. It'll still look nice, mm -hmm. but it's meant to be used with a non-super wash, you know, woolly wool. Right. So, and even if you just wanted to pick up, like, the Jameson and Smith, like, their little 100, uh, 50 gram, their 25 gram little skeins, they're, mm -hmm. like, maybe 2 $3 a pop. I don't know what, maybe it's a little more expensive because it's over in the UK. It might right. you have customs or duty or whatever, but... It's definitely worth it. It's a good, it's a good yarn. So. And there's a lot of local dyers and a lot of local um, shops that have mini skeins. Yep. So definitely check those out. Yep. 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 All right. How I'll many do one patterns do you have? I always have lots of patterns. Okay. All right. So now we're getting really big. Okay. So my first was a cowl. My second was a wrap. And now we're going to go to a stash buster blanket. Okay. So if you want to clean out your stash, if you have like a ton of skeins left over from projects, which I definitely do, um, I don't know what to do with them because the, the project's done. So I have yeah. no idea what to do with them. So this is a crochet blanket by Crochet Instinct. Okay. And this is about uh, 1,400 to 56,000 yards. Uh, no, fi 56,000? <laughs> Did you say that correctly? 5,600. Okay. Uh, like, that's a lot Please of excuse me. I'm also breaking. Okay. Um, <laughs> this pattern's also available for free. So nice. highly recommend it. Um, and it's got a nice crochet pattern to it. Um, it looks like, like, it looks like there's like layer. You'll see the picture because um, it's going to go pop. Um, <laughs> you're going to see it. And it's kind of like a bar, but like the color ripples into each other. Okay, kind of, it almost looks like it's kind of like a hair, not herringbone, oh, what, houndstooth. Yeah, similar kinda. to like a houndstooth style, but crochet. Um, okay. Yeah, I, since I'm a huge fan of blankets and I also have a huge stash that probably needs busting, um, this would be a project for me. Okay. Um, this is in worsted weight, so if you have a lot of worsted, then this would be good for you. Um, okay. And then probably would do like a neutral border, try to just kind of like bring it all in, but yeah. Nice. That's my pick. Nice, nice. Okay. My next one is a cowl. Sorry, hold on. I'm trying not to have a whole saga again with my knitting. Uh -huh. um, this is called the Simply Scrappy Cowl by Helen Stewart. She does a lot of, like, mystery knit-alongs. Ooh, okay. Um, so I haven't tried any of her patterns, but she did a really awesome uh, mystery knit-along this last year, and I think Vine, Kristen Stewart, she's another mm -hmm. uh, podcaster, she did the mystery i loved i loved how it turned out anyway right um so she got a ton of fun patterns but this is um this one looks like it's gonna be again another fingering weight pattern mm -hmm. it's super long so it's gonna definitely like it's it's longer than my ode to grace and frankie it's probably double Ooh. the length you don't have to make it that long right you definitely don't, but you can if you want to. Like, if you wanted to do all 24 colors of your Advent skein, mm -hmm. like, use up the entire thing, that's probably why it's so long. Mm -hmm. um, but she used 460 yards. Okay. Um, again, it's... Girlfriend's decent. <laughs> but it's a striped, and then the pattern is eyelets. Okay. So, it's definitely a lot of fun. Um, a good way to get different colors and textures probably a great project to show some of your um fun heathered or you know mm -hmm. tonal yarns mm -hmm. maybe some fun speckles yeah i think it's like these projects are like great for just experimenting yeah. with because like i'm not usually one to experiment with colors like but these sound like great projects to experiment with i mean these projects all seem as though to me it's more about showcasing the colors mm -hmm. and the yarn rather than a texture or a pat I mean with the, with the exception of the fair isle right um it's more about okay this skein I love this brilliant color I'm placing it here mm -hmm. so it's like front and center I've got these more you know subtle colors they're gonna right. be like my side characters but like the whole point is like we're showcasing 
these these minis. Like right. they, they're doing all the work. They don't need any extra texture or anything. They're doing the heavy lifting. Exactly. So again, fun pattern. Um, we'll list which ones are free and which ones are paid. This one is a, a paid for pattern. Um, mm-hmm. I did mention a couple in the beginning which are free. Um, but yeah, so this again, scrappy, simply scrappy cow by Helen Stewart. Mm-hmm. Now, if you don't like making big things like blankets or mm-hmm. shawls, or if you don't like making garments at all, this project would be for you because this is the stash baskets. Um, Ooh. another crochet pattern oh, by Rhonda Mull, uh, Umbaka, Umbaka design. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping I'm saying this right. Sorry. Um, so these are basically just making crochet baskets. Um, if you crochet, you know that crochet is very versatile and you can make anything with it. Um, literally like just making a crochet basket out of your old scraps. Yeah. And honestly, same. (laughs) I like it if you have like a ton of like cotton or linen left over. Oh yeah. Like if you have like amigurumi cotton um any crochet cotton um this would be good um it looks like they have yarn held together so it doesn't even need to be um the iron weight that is listed here um you could definitely oh yeah a couple fingering weight yarns together you could just throw whatever honestly you could throw whatever you want together it's your yeah. basket you're just gonna want it to have a little uh, like good structure so you're yeah. gonna want to pay attention to you know making sure that it's gonna be a sturdy yeah, basket. you're not going to make a basket out of cashmere um, because it's nice and, like, floopy. Or mohair. Or mohair. <laughs> it's nice and floopy. Um, you're definitely going to make it out of something that's sturdy, like cotton, um, like a cotton blend. Um, yeah. Maybe even, like, bamboo. Some bamboos oh, yeah. are, are nice and sturdy. sturdy. Um, some of your thicker wools, your um, wools that are really not meant for skin-to-skin contact. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so definitely Better those are going to keep using your structure. Them for your home goods. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. These, and these baskets look, look fun. You can probably make them any size. They're just like a general pattern and it's free as well. So awesome. Um, so this is one that I kept seeing all over Ravelry, um, as being like, it's, it's gorgeous in its own, right? It's mm-hmm. not like, yeah, it's planned to be a scrappy project, but it just looks really, really cool. Uh, this is the Anisadora shawl by Lindsay Fowler. Um, and it's, the reason it's so cool is that you don't have to whip in any of your loose ends. It's got built-in fringe. Oh, that's cool. if you, we'll post a picture with, she's got a lovely photo of her shawl completely spread out. And you can just see all the fringe at the bottom. So you're just doing colors as you go. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, a triangular shawl, symmetrical triangle shawl. And the whole point is to, like, go until you're done the row, and then you snip the end, and you move on to the next thing. Do you, like, tie it off and then snip? Like, how does that work? So, I'm not exactly sure. This is a paid-for pattern. I didn't buy it yet, but I want to. We're cheap. You didn't buy it. (laughs) I didn't buy it. My understanding is that it looks like, um, it doesn't look like they're tied in, but I could be wrong. Right. We'll get back to you. <laughs> but it looks like fun. The fact that I don't have to tie in all my ends, because that's the reason. Scrappy projects are great, but you're switching colors all the damn time. Right. And then you have to tie in all those ends. I'm not here for it. Nobody's here for it. I'm really not here for it. But anyway. I, who, those, wait, wait. Who likes tying in loose ends? I mean, here's the thing. Sometimes it's, it's really therapeutic. If I'm listening to, like, a podcast or something and it's really early in the morning and I don't really feel like knitting but I feel like touching yarn like okay I can, <laughs> I can sew in my ends so the new phrase instead of go touch grass is go touch yarn um hashtag <laughs> wipes of Hunterdon County so I almost did a spit take there <laughs> um go touch yarn <laughs> anyway I think this is definitely a fun project to try. If you're not typical for the, um, you know, scrappy projects because you're like, they're all over the place. This isn't something I would typically wear. Mm -hmm. This is something you're going to wear. I mean, it's, it's very, it's calling me back to my like Western roots of living in Arizona. It's definitely something that I have seen at, in a store, on a cowboy, on the back of a horse. Like it, 
it, it looks authentic to me. If you me. ever go to, like, a store and look at, like, their shawls or whatever and see that it costs, like, a ton of money to buy and then say, I can make that for cheaper, here it is. This Here's is your this, cheaper. This is the shawl. <laughs> because you didn't buy any yarn. Nope. It's your leftovers, and it looks damn cool. Only have to pay whatever money this is for the pattern, and yeah, that's uh, it. Six fifty. Oh, six fifty. See, six hundred and fifty dollars of your money going to a shawl, or six dollars and fifty cents for the pattern, and many many years of gathering. And then people can be like, "Oh, where'd scraps. you buy that shawl?" And you'd be like, "I made, I made it." it and then they are blown to bits because they're like, "Oh wow, you're so cool." Yeah. Um. So. Anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna circle back how many patterns you got left because I've got one. I've got three. You got two. Okay. Cool. I'll do another one and then we'll switch back off. Okay. Um. All right. So I haven't done socks yet, but if I was gonna do socks, these look like fun socks to do. They are called the Triangle Scrappy Socks by Liz Harris. And they are just like how they sound. They are a color work sock that is literally a triangle motif all over. Now, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Last year, Madison was petrified. <laughs> Absolutely petrified of color work. Now, look at her now. She's thriving. She has so many Fair Isle projects that I it's out the wazoo. We love us some stranded color work over here. It's a fun time. She came in and I was wearing my Bears with Hats pullover. Right. Because it's not a hoodie because I didn't make my hoodie. But I was sweating so I, I had to switch into my yes, this is my resting stitch face shirt which I need to stand up and actually show you. Rosemary Designs. Based in Union, New Jersey. Sorry, I had to, I had to do the shout out. Of course. Um, we, love, we love Rosemary. Of so. course. She's she's amazing. But yeah, to back to the point, I, was, I didn't really want to do color work but now I'm like super obsessed with it. This year's petrified movement is socks, so... One day we'll get her to do cables. One day. 2024. Maybe. Maybe. We'll look back in a year and we'll be doing cables and we'll be like, yeah, mess, and you said not until 2024. Um, anyway. So, Triangle Scrappy Socks by Liz Harris. Definitely worthy of a cast on. They're going to be, again, like a sock weight, fingering weight. They use Malabrigo yarn sock um you can use any sock what i any fingering weight sock weight yarn that you want um again i'm gonna say because it's during color work you might want to use something that's a little more you know suited to stranded color work mm -hmm. don't use anything that's super silky you're gonna want to use something that's gonna hold up too Right, and you're going to use, um, definitely for, I guess, like, the heel or, like, the toes, it, definitely the places of more wear, you want, um, something with nylon in it. Yeah, Just definitely. for, yeah, just for the extra strength, but, I mean, the rest of it doesn't have to be with nylon. Now, it looks like the toe, the whole calf and top of the foot is triangles, but the heel and the toes are definitely a different texture. Yeah. I'm very curious. I would definitely use like a a nice base color, like maybe a black or something to tie it all together, mm -hmm. but also yeah. have nylon in it because those yeah. are the most like the areas of most wear. Yeah. You don't want to have to be constantly patching these socks up. Right. You know, mending if you don't like tying your ends, why are you mending socks? You're not. You're you're like You're no. throwing them out. Yeah. That's a waste. Not you worth spent it. all this time. Hashtag not worth it. My goodness. Anyway, all right, your turn. Go back. All right, the Stash Buster V Scarf, V for Victoria. Mm. Ooh, very nice. All right, uh, crochet. So we're getting back to garments. Okay. Uh, and this looks like a variety of stitch patterns. So you got the like shell stitch. You got like some basic uh, single stitch. You got some uh, looks like some like some treble crochets in there. Um, okay. Some nice spacing. It looks like a, a nice pattern that you could probably make. Um, is this another fingering weight one or no? No, this is Aaron weight. Okay. Uh, so this is also free on mm -hmm. Ravelry. Um, and it looks like uh, they use Lion Brand, Red Heart, and Burnett. Okay. Uh, so you don't have to use them, but... Um, you can use whatever Aaron weight, but if you oh, yeah. feel like you've got some leftovers that you might not want to use for, like, a nicer project, 
You could definitely use. Yeah, so definitely put into consideration, like, if you have projects that, or if you have leftovers that are the heavier, um, kind of rustic-y wool types, um, this is not a project uh, that you would want to use those in. No, because it's going to be wrapped around your neck. Right. Um, so. so it's got a, a huge prickle factor. Um, so definitely choose your softer wools, your cashmeres, your silks. Um, and then it, you're definitely going to see the texture out with each stripe and yeah. every color. So this is a yeah. this is a fun project to not only use all of your yarn. But try out all your new stitches. Exactly. It's a crochet sampler. Yeah, crochet sampler. Okay. So I've got my last two patterns are sweaters. So in true of course. fashion, one is a pullover and one is a cardigan. Because you remember from our last episode, we said one of our goals this year was to steak. Oh, a I project. found a great cardigan pattern. I have okay. to show you. You will have to show me. Um... So the first sweater is the pullover sweater. It is called My Favorite Adventure by Dragon Horde Designs. I'm Ooh. doing a Dragon Horde Designs pattern right now, um, the Half Moon Tee. And so this pattern was designed for mini skeins as a sweater. It's Ooh. not a sweater that's striped or anything. I mean, it, it, it does end up having a striped effect, but there's a definite, you know back and forth. Like, it's not solid stripes. Right. You're using mini skeins, so yeah. it's kind of, yeah, you're going through the mini skeins. Well, yeah, but it also looks like she's got a main color here that you are doing some sort of fading work with. Oh, okay. So it's not, that's what I mean by, it's not solid stripes across because you, there's definitely a fade right. going on, it looks like. Um, so again, fingering weight yarn, it's a sweater, so you're going to, again, want a good chunk of mini skeins mm -hmm. or it's it's like your half skeins that are left over your 50 grams maybe 40 grams mm -hmm. of color and then you're gonna want a main color to go along with it right but you're not gonna need a whole bunch of main color because you're fading so right going back and forth between all this but it's a lovely pattern i've i love her her patterns i think they're really um beautiful and mm -hmm. unique and you know, she's got very clear and, and concise instructions, and Ooh. the charts are awesome. Okay. So, I've definitely, I already have yarn for other patterns of hers in my stash, in my queue to right. do. So, I'm, I've already signed up for an advent calendar for this upcoming Christmas <laughs> from okay. Botanical Yarns over in the UK. Right. And I'm probably going to be doing this pattern with that kit. Oh, that's lovely. So... Beware, 2024 is going to be the year of my favorite adventure. We're already planning that for in advance. <laughs> hold, hold me to it, guys. Hold me to it. Oh, my God. Um, but, yeah, so it's the My Favorite Adventure by Dragon Horde, Yarn, uh, Dragon Horde Designs. Okay. So. All right. And my last pattern is the Scrap Buster Beanie. Okay. So similar kind of to what I'm wearing. Um, this is... <laughs> Um, cute, uh, published in cute as a button crochet and craft website. So I have, that is such a cute name. Aww. Um, it's by Esther Thompson. Um, uh, this is an Aran Wheat, another Aran Wheat yarn. Um, like we said with the other ones, um, this is crochet yeah. and it's going to be testing out using your different stitches and using your different, uh, colors mm -hmm. and having that nice solid base to bring it all in. Cool. Yeah. Looks like a fun hat, too. Yeah. Definitely looks like it's a beginner-friendly pattern. Oh, yeah. A lot of these patterns are, are pretty beginner-friendly. Um, okay. I just, like, you know, test it out. Why Why not? You have scraps. Why not just test out if you don't like it or you can't do it? Then... It's not like you invested a whole bunch of money in new yarn for a project and you're not going to use it. Exactly. It's your leftovers. Yep. So if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. You yep. move on. Absolutely. Okay, so my last pattern, um, this again is a cardigan. It is the, um, excuse me, Garter Marler Cardigan by Stephen West. I was going to ask Stephen West who was going to show up in this. Yes, absolutely. And so this pattern is um, figuring held double, so it's a DK wheat pattern. Ooh, okay. Um, and again, it's a garter stitch cardigan designed to showcase all your fingering weight leftovers it's supposed to be marl marled, marled 
We're breaking here. <laughs> January has not been kind, okay? <laughs> She's Fear marbled. God. I'm marbled already. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, you can customize how long you want it, how short you want it. You could definitely make it more cropped. Or you can make it like a duster mm -hmm. length if you wanted to. And I believe it is steaked. I could be wrong. I'm reading. It's got... So, it is in the round, so he does end up seeking it. Oh, nice. Um, but it's meant to utilize a, lot, a ton of leftovers. You know Stephen West patterns. What He's got all these lovely marled items. His he, Another scrappy project that oh. he does have is called the Pinguono, and it's like a huge outerwear um, set of these. I feel like to any, hold different weights. I feel like any of his projects are scrappy projects because there's so many colors in them. Yeah. I mean, some of them you do have. You, you do, do have, have to plan. But you like, do have to plan. But, like, something like this... You can literally just grab everything out of your stash, do some planning so it does look, you know, coherent, cohesive, <laughs> but you don't need to go out and buy yarn for this sort of project. You right. have it. You just have to think about it. Um, and, you know, I think especially after the holidays, maybe you got yarn or gift cards to your local yarn stores, or maybe, you know, because the holidays were you focused on like, all the gifts and all the treats for everybody else. You're trying to save on money. So let's do some scrappy projects. So right. we're still getting to knit and crochet. Yes. But we're being smart about it. And, you know, obviously, if you're able to, go support your local yarn stores. Because I know a ton in the area around here, especially Beyond Yarn, are playing trunk shows for the spring when the weather is, you know, nice and everything. Right. But... You know, be smart. You definitely have stuff in stash that you can use. And the patterns that we mentioned tonight, some are free, some are paid. But the whole point is that you're utilizing stuff that you already have. You're busting your stash. Um, yeah. You're not contributing to any more waste. You're being um, green. You're being eco-friendly. It's a resolution we should all have. We you should know? all be green. But yeah. So that was my last pattern. There's definitely several that I mentioned tonight that I, I'm looking at. I'm like, I, I definitely could see myself casting that on. Right. But, you know, further reflection needs to be done on what exact scraps I have because I do have a couple bins of mini skeins and scraps that right. I need to go through and, you know, plan projects. Right. It's something that I feel like I also need to go through, too, because I think... I I do these projects, but I I'm like okay. I have this leftover. I'm just gonna put it here on the shelf. It's almost and like then, it's forgotten, right? And it's like, okay, we went and we bought gorgeous yarn mm -hmm. for a specific project. The yarn's still beautiful. It's just not whole, so it doesn't deserve to get tossed into the back of your closet oh, yeah. or whatever. I mean, and that's part of the reason why I finished my hat today. But this didn't automatically go back in my closet or in my drawer. I mean, there's a hefty amount of the skein left. I haven't weighed it out yet, but this is a decent chunk of yarn still. It's it, it's plenty to do another project with. Yeah, and, like, I have a decent amount of this, which is mohair and um, the combination that I use for Madison's sweater. Um, but it's not enough to really do anything with. So this would be great to put with a different project you know it's yeah. a great um or low color really um love it would look really it's... nicely paired if you had any of this white left over oh yeah maybe it would be great probably enough for a hat mm -hmm. um but yeah. yeah like i finished a sweater so it's like i have stuff left over what am i supposed to do with it yeah and if you feel like you know you don't really know what to do with the scraps like my mom's gift knit I have most of the terracotta color left over. Mm -hmm. That's going in her package for her. She will use it along with all the other yarns that she has already. Like, she'll find a use for it. I love the color, but it, I don't need to add any more stash yarn to my stash. Right. Like, I, got, I pulled it out of stash for this project. Right. She will find a use for it. I don't want it to make it sound like I'm pawning it off on her. Right. But... Also, if she decides that she wants to, you know, add something to this or another project, she has the color. She could make herself a crocheted hat. Right. And uh, if none of these patterns really uh, catch your eye or, you know, don't tickle your fancy, 
um, and you're not really interested in doing anything with your scraps, uh, another thing that you can do with them is donate them. Yeah. So you can donate them to library programs where they teach people how to crochet or yeah. how to knit. Yeah. Um, Local yarn stores also sometimes collect because they want yarns for, um, they might be collecting for programs that they're doing with the community right. or for classes that they're teaching to for their beginner classes. Maybe they, you know, want something that people can just test out to right. see if they actually want to continue learning how to knit or crochet and they don't want them to have to invest in, you know, a whole bunch of yarn and, and tools and stuff. So Right. It's a great uh, springboard into teaching somebody how to without you know, dedicating a, an entire skein to just teaching them. They yeah. can learn off of, you know, a little bit of scraps. Um, that's basically how I taught my mom how to crochet. I yeah. gave her some of my scraps and was like, please just learn. You just need to learn the motions. Right. And then once you figured it out, go buy yourself some yarn. Right. And I'm like, I don't care about this yarn anymore. Use it for a project. Yeah. It's, de it's dead to me. The yarn is dead to me. Yeah. No. does not belong in my stash no. anymore. Um, the, another another resource is that there are several uh, local guilds or county guilds that are for knitters and crocheters. There's one in Harding County. And we're not going to talk about that one because they refuse to have us working adults. We're going to start our own with blackjack and hookers. Oh, my God. And it's going to be for working adults only. I swear to God, we're going to get bombed off the internet if we continue like this. Do it. Bon I want to see those old ladies bomb us off the internet. Come on. Who mm -hmm. hosts a guild meeting at 11 to 2 on Fridays? I'm working. How am I supposed to join? Good enough. Fair enough. See? I would also lecture that most of those guild members are probably retired people. I don't care. I want to join because I always wanted to join a guild and they need to suck it up and host it at a, a working person's time. Okay. All right. We'll get into that on another episode. She's obviously on a hill that she's willing to die on. Blackjack, hookers. And, and with that, that's been Scrappy with Tori and Madison. We being Scrappy... And oh, for the love of leftovers. <laughs> I don't know where you were going with that. We've definitely had this conversation. I know we have, but I don't remember. What do you mean you don't remember? I don't remember. When do we talk? When do we talk blackjack and hookers? And that's, that's, that's a Futurama reference. I'm definitely not. I'm blanking on all of this now. It's Bender says he's going to make a new uh, moon theme park oh. with blackjack and hookers it's like one of the most famous lines from yeah Futurama. i need to, to rewatch futurama obviously no i'm not doing you any favors i know awful i'm sorry awful anyway. i should just defriend you right now no <laughs> but yeah so donate if you if you don't want to do a scrappy project don't let those scraps linger give them to a loving home Obviously, the big, the more quantity of a color or colors that you have, the better um, if you're donating them. Right. Because people should be able to make something out of the stuff that you're giving away, not just, you know, piece it together. Right. But, yeah, anything, you know, donating anything. You can make, like, scrappy hats for people who have cancer or preemies in, like, hospitals. Mm -hmm. Like, if you don't want it, like, you're like, I don't like these scraps, I'm not going to wear them myself, donate them. Yeah, you could also make a donated project. Yeah, I, like, highly recommend making donated projects. Um, you can make a striped beanie or striped socks for Knit the Rainbow. You can make, uh, if you have a lot of blue left over, you can make, uh... Hat Not Hate? Yeah, Hat Not Hate, which is, which uses blue yarn. Yep. But no, there's a lot of options. Yeah. So... Make yourself something out of your scraps. Donate something out of your scraps. Donate your scraps. And if you make something, send us a picture. Yeah, we would love, love to, to see, see your scrappy project. Yeah, we would love to see if you use any of these projects that we've mentioned here. Um, yeah. We would love to see any of your scraps that you've used in a project. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Please send us. Absolutely. If you've got questions or you want more suggestions on other scrappy projects, please let us know. And you can reach us at... 
knitwivesofhunterdon county at gmail.com or on Instagram, the real knitwives of Hunterdon County. And that information will be down in our description. Yeah. With our show notes. Yep, and I will be posting a episode reminder for everybody on Instagram, so hopefully you get to see episode four. Yep. And there shortly will be a well before this is published there'll be an if you missed it for episode three. Because that that needed to be published as well. Again. January's not been so kind. Yeah. We're, okay, like, listen, we, we are doing this for fun, but yep. also, like, we're two working adults. Yeah. And it's it's hard. Yeah. I don't, I don't know how other people do it. <laughs> I, you know, I think everyone's on the struggle bus. There are right. times where it's, like, great, and there's other times where it's a dumpster fire. Right. And we're, right I'm, now, ja- January's technically a dumpster fire. I mean, I'm a constant dumpster fire, so, like... Yeah. I'm constantly trying to not be a dumpster fire. Yeah. We got goals. But. We got goals. Yeah. So, definitely, definitely uh, check out um, our Instagram and, you know, our Ravelry pages and all that stuff. And if you have questions, email us. Don't we have a TikTok, too? We have one post on TikTok. We're getting there. I don't use TikTok. She's fully in charge of it. Anyway, I think we didn't, we done did it. We done did it. We done did it. All right. So. Check us out online. Come back for more shenanigans and snarky behavior. But and hills to die on. <laughs> and hills to die on. With rants a coming. Oh, she has one. She's like preparing in advance. Yes. Like this is a rant for the ages. Yes. <laughs> it's a it's a thesis on in on this many essay, things. I will. <laughs> I will be fighting everybody on my hill to die on. But anyway, I'm Madison. I'm Tori. And, and this, this has been, been The Real Knit Wives of Hunterdon County. Bye! <laughs> <laughs>